videos on my channel. So the Skype Me Maybe video, that's popular because it was a collaboration and because the community shared it. The reason it got so many views is because all of, uh, like many of you and many people who follow um, other people's channels, they all shared it. We all worked together. And collaboration is so important. And, it's, and I see this with a lot, a lot of, uh, of our videos. We'd be interviewing one another and you get a link to the other person's channel. So it's not just about you making your best videos, but work with other people. And like on the blogging aspect, you guest post, you write on other people's blogs. Not just about language learning. Like I've taken my language learning idea and put it on these very, very big blogs, like the financial blog, Get Rich Slowly. I wrote a guest post, how to learn a language without spending a cent. On Zen Habits, a blog about minimalism, wrote a guest post, the simple way to learning a language. <laughs> On Art of Manliness, I wrote a guest post, How to Learn a Language Like a Man. <laughs> so I just try, keep, keep trying to put as many spins as I can because these are websites with huge audiences that a small percentage of them, you know, whatever, 5% or 10%, whatever it is, want to learn languages. But that's a small percentage of a big number. So think outside of just collaborating with other language learners, but also collaborating with other bloggers in general, and letting them guest post on your site. And I love having guest posts, and you're welcome to send me your ideas. Like, last week's guest post I had is my favorite one ever, is this, this wonderful girl who's uh, partially deaf and, and um, very, very um, seriously blind, has managed to learn five languages. Her story is so inspirational. I was like, you have to guest post on my blog. So I welcome these kind of inspirational and unique stories. Um, and keep that in mind, that you're, when you're on their site, you can put a link to your, your blog and get more, more traffic. Um, but then a couple of other things. This second video of me and Moses McCormick, and I'm sure many of you know, know of Moses, um, he, we, we talk all the time on Facebook, and he's like, Benny, we've got to do another video together to get so many views. And I, t I told Moses, the reason this video got so many views is not because I'm in it. It's, it's your stuff. You are what's special in this video. The only difference is I put some, some of my editing on it. And I think it's, it's important to have a little bit of, to try to have a little bit of professionalism in, in your video. So, for instance, mm, I, I, I get inspiration from many other things. So, like, on t when you watch a TV show, you have a very short um, thing to get you interested in this episode, and then you have the song, the theme song, and then you get into the episode. So why can't we do that on YouTube? And a lot of the most popular YouTube channels do that. They're like, in today's video, I'm going to be doing whatever, and, and then that gets you interested. And um, <coughs> I'll give you a couple of examples in a second. But that, what I did with this is I took Moses' video, which unfortunately, he tends to upload raw videos that are two hours long. <laughs> I've never seen that on my stuff channel. This is wonderful, but a two hour long video is unfortunately not going to work because the YouTube generation has a very low attention span. You should aim for a five to ten minute video and try to make it uh, intense and say really amazing things or take a very, very long segment and, and cut it down to as short as possible. Um, it's annoying because like, you know, you can do so much more in an hour, you can discuss so many more interesting things, but five minutes is, like, you have to think of the majority of people who are on YouTube are sitting down at the end of the day's work and they just want to watch something funny, you know? They, they, may, they may not be interested in language learning, but you can, you can grab their interest. This, this video of me and Moses was just going into um, a, a mall, as they call them in America, just going into one, walking around, talking to people. It was a unique concept. And people were like, uh, they got interested in just seeing us using these languages in a random place. And then after that, I made sure within the video, like the video is purely for entertainment purposes, but within the video, there's a short segment where I'm talking to the camera saying, you can do it. You don't have to doubt yourself. Just walk up to somebody and open your mouth and, and say something. And that was my way of getting through to people. With all of those views, I could still use it as a way to inspire monolinguals to give language learning a try. Um, another way you can get a lot of interest in your channel is to talk about something very specific that people are searching for. 
So this video I did uh, interviewing this lady about the differences between French in France and French in Quebec, that's just very simply something people search for on YouTube. And a lot of the times, um, and another reason Moses' channel is, it gets a lot of views, is he's uploaded so many videos, he's uploaded almost 2,000 videos. <laughs> but it, each one has so many different titles that sometimes unintentionally, and I, I'm trying to encourage him to, to get more intentional, but sometimes unintentionally, it happened to use a, uh, a phrase that people search for a lot. And that, that will bring it out on top. So, um, and one other thing here is you just see that I've got this fun little image. And if, um, if you're a YouTube partner, then you can do all of these wonderful things. And I'll just get onto that now in a second. Um, now, a YouTube par a partner, the, the main idea, the main reason this exists is for Google to make money. Okay? That's the reason it exists. And they want more people to be partners because... If, uh, if they put ads in your video, then you know, they pay you next to nothing. The, the payment is, is not worth your time at all. But if they get one ad in a million videos and pay each person one cent, then they actually get a lot of exposure. So from their perspective, it makes sense. From our perspective, you, you have to be getting like half a million or a million views or something on your video to make real money. So that's a lot of people kind of think to become a YouTube partner is about making money. No. You become a YouTube partner for all clear. of these other benefits. So if you clear. just search Google like a YouTube partner, you just click a button and you apply. The criteria is that your content is original and your channel is good. It's kind of blurry and we have someone from YouTube here. Um, I don't know where... where are you? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> we have Stu from YouTube, so you can uh, talk to him if you, if you like. And I don't know if, if there are specific criteria for becoming a partner like a certain number of views your channel has to have or a certain number of comments but just in general being active by leaving comments on other channels by uploading lots of interesting videos by guest posting on other blogs so that they're referenced in on those blogs so you get more views ultimately these are great ways to make your channel active and that your content is good just means a couple of people come it up you don't have to get millions of views just you know, if you get a couple of hundred or a thousand views, you might actually be ready to become a YouTube partner. Just click the button, you become a partner. Now, this means that your video starts to get featured. If you've ever noticed you're in YouTube, the top right, there's a featured video. That's always from uh, YouTube partners. It's like having a free advertising spot. You're just, you're just there, you don't pay for it. It's just because you're a YouTube partner. You have all these analytical tools, so I can see where my traffic is coming from. I could see, like, uh, when my video with Moses started to get a lot of hits, I was like, where are all these people coming? I don't get it. And then I looked into my analytics, and I saw that it was Reddit that was referring those people. And I could take advantage of that. I went in, I talked to them, and I said, how are you guys doing? And they said, you should do an Ask Me Anything, and they helped me get on the front page of Reddit. And it's because I used the analytical tools within YouTube. And then you've got the... Oh, I misspelled this, sorry got the customized banner and the still image. And that still image of me here is much better than the previous one. That they, the default in YouTube takes three random still images. And one of them was just me like... <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that because you have to remember, you have, uh, it's about people with a short attention span. That they're flicking through things quickly. And if they just see some guy just like this, <laughs> then why did they didn't want to click that video? So I got, I got this... What I thought was the best still image of me, like, you know, doing something in front of the camera and then all these flags to show it's about language learning or the Skype Me Maybe video, I completely re-edited it and, um, you know, I, I had some special graphics with Moses, I threw in all this extra stuff uh, and then, of course, with the French and Quebec one, I have the flags because that really grabs people's attention as they're searching. So, you can, all, you can do this as a YouTube partner. You can customize everything. So, I highly recommend you just click that button to sign up for one, okay? Um, but a few other reasons particular polyglot videos do well is Tim's video has got almost 1.5 million views. And I think the number one reason is because of the very first thing he says. Hello, my name is Tim, I'm 16, and in this video I'm going to be speaking 20 languages. That, to me, is the reason the video went viral. Because they're so, like, the, the most viral video ever for, you, for YouTube polyglots. One and a half million views. 
Uh, there's so many of us that have done somewhat similar videos. We'll sit in front of our camera, we'll talk a little bit. Um, sometimes they could get you know a few thousand views, and, and that's nice. But the thing is, you have to remember, with the short attention span a lot of people have, they're sitting down, they're clicking a video, they're looking at it quickly, and then they're going away. So at the very beginning, Tim has defined what the entire video is. It's going to be impressive because firstly he's, he's young, he's 16, and then he's telling us what, what he's doing. I'm going to be speaking 20 languages. And I find a lot of videos that try to be like these polyglot style videos, they start off with someone saying, you know, Hi, I'm Benny, and first language I learned was Spanish, and uh, you know, uh, it was very hard for me. And, and it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of boring, even, even though it's impressive that I'm, go I'm going to start speaking other languages, or even if I jump straight into Spanish, people are like, you know, what, what's going on? I don't, I don't understand what he's saying. And then on top of that, like within the video, obviously, he's smiling, he's using a good quality camera. So some webcams, they, they don't really record good quality. And another thing is by adding captions, you make your video come up by default for a lot of people. Because a lot of people are using YouTube at their job and they can't listen. So they've got a default set that, they, that they'll only be able to watch videos with captions. Because then they can understand it. And as well as that, um, if you're just talking about something interesting, you can get through to the deaf community as well. I've got a lot of deaf people who have watched my videos because the captions are always there. So I highly recommend you try to, especially if it's in other languages, to put the captions. Because uh, there's a lot of people who can't listen to what you're saying, but they still want to follow your video. Um, yeah, Moses, I've already said, he's got 1,730. Probably since, since I took this count, he's got another 10 videos, I imagine. <laughs> um, and now, Gl Glossica, um, uh, Mike Campbell, uh, he, he's, he's got probably the most subscribers uh, out of our group, I think. And what well, his videos are very, very specific. He talks about how to learn English for Taiwanese people. And I was talking to somebody before who has a lot of random things on their channel. They talk about, you know, travel, they talk about this, this passion, they talk a bit about languages. Make it specific. If you have different passions, if you want a video about travel, you could start a brand new YouTube channel just about your travel uh, experiences. How, if you have a YouTube about languages, make it just about languages. Okay? Um, make, make it specific. And try to help people. Try to make it, as I said, something searchable, the answer to a question. Like, it's not as interesting to just hear me talk in several languages about my, tr you know, random things about me. But to me, for me to discuss the answer to a question, why is Fre what's different about French in Quebec? That's, that's something people want to know. So, always keep that in mind. Think about what is a random person searching YouTube looking for. So, um, that's just a quick random idea of things, but like, feel free to ask me whatever questions you, you want, because um, I know it's a bit fragmented what I've been talking about, but I really want to give you a few random ideas for things to help you and your YouTube and your blogging and your concept and your ideas, uh, whatever you're passionate about, is if you think about the person on the other end, trying to get through to the, them, not just about what, what you think works, but to edit your videos, to start it with the right thing, to maybe have a little musical intro. If you've heard the musical intros to my videos, got it on Fiverr. I paid five dollars for this cool little jingle, which, which someone spends all day doing. He, that's his job. He sits down and he makes little jingles for people. So, five dollars, you know? So, um, yeah, that's just a couple of suggestions, but feel free to ask whatever questions you want. Because yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be the most inspirational talk. I, I love the other talks, but that's what I want to be, is useful it's, to help it, people inspire in their own exactly. ways. Exactly. I mean, it's just in, no, in the whole useful. Um, spirit, really, of what the, the Polyglot conferences are about, is to really engender uh, that desire to learn and to promote language learning, not just also the learning process, but also various topics that we've raised today, some of which we'll see again tomorrow as well, and then also how to use them in a practical way. Um, so really, really useful. Thank you very much. And now I want to open the floor for um, some questions. We've got to leave on the dot at half past, so we've got a good 15 minutes for questions. And um, 
He's going to I'm going to start at the back. I'm going to be fair. I start at the front and the back. Oh, it's a long way, isn't it? Hi, Benny. Hey, um, I got a question. Um, when you first started blogging, I imagine you don't have 2,000 view or, you know. So, what did you do or did you, what, how did you consistently grow in your community and did, did you, like, what happened? Did you have, like, a first break, like, you know, like a jump? Like, what did you do and how did you grow your channel consistently or your, your subscribers? Mm -hmm. What I did at the start was I commented on other blogs. I tried to see questions that they were asking or in forums and I would try to answer those questions. With, and you don't try to do it in a spammy way and say, you know, answers here on my blog. But they try to genuinely discuss what they're asking and put a little link to the blog at the end of that. Um, that's one way. But what, what gave me actually my biggest boost was because I had an inter interesting project. Like the idea of fluent in three months. It's a, it's a weird thing. It catches your attention. And so because of that, uh, it was more interesting. And this is why I think a unique project is just going to naturally grab people's attention. So a project like, I'm going to learn Spanish. That's, that's, not, that's not something that inspires people or that creates controversy. Obviously, fluent in three months creates a lot of controversy. There are people who argue, oh, he's, he's crazy, he's whatever. But it's, it'll get their attention. And it got their attention. The first real break I got was I was um, uh, given a link in a Dutch uh, email newsletter. Um, and then after that, I got number six in the Babla language blogging thing. And that, that was pretty good because that was just one month after I started blogging. It was number six. Because there wasn't a lot of like um, super active language blogs at the time. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, do you know who I am? I know exactly who you are. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Anthony Lander, fluent in Czech. <laughs> fluent in Czech, rather. Uh, thanks for that. No. Um, so I have a YouTube channel. I, I watch your videos very regularly. I'm, I'm a subscriber. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what is that? I appreciate it. But I occasionally get emails from YouTube saying I should be one of these partners. Mm -hmm. But doesn't that mean adverts appear all over your No, videos? because what happens is, you, it, it means you can put ad advertisements on your videos. But all I do is I click the box to say, no, I don't want any advertisements. Perfect. And, and, I, know, and I, know, I know what you mean, because it would be annoying if you imagine trying to watch the Skype Me Maybe video, and at the start, it's one of those annoying things that kind of leads you off in some advertising you can't get out of until the countdown timer goes or some like little pop-up, it just destroys the experience. I know exactly what you mean, you don't want that. Yeah. All you gotta do is like when you're uploading a video, there's an option, do you want to advertise? And you just say, no, I don't. I, I don't want your two cents per month, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so definitely, especially yourself, Good definitely point. sign Maybe up. If you've got a great video, sign up to be a partner. Just click the button, and I, I know for a fact you'll be, you'll be accepted immediately. Because I, I, by, based on the number of views you've got, the comments, You'll instantly become a partner. Okay. So, I was wondering, when you started doing YouTube videos, did you have any film experience, or how did you get film experience, and how did you learn how to edit the videos? I, I have a very, very, very random background. And I've, I've had many, I've had over 60 different types of jobs in my travels and, and that kind of stuff. And I actually used to be an actor. I was in uh, an extra in a couple of movies. Uh, I, got a, I had a little scene with Dan Aykroyd, if anyone knows him. He was one of the Ghostbusters. So and I was in like four or five musicals. Um, so I have this kind of a little bit of a, a background in understanding how to appreciate an audience and try to get through to them. Um, but with video, I, I was just always interested. I, I had a little camcorder, the family camcorder when I was young, and I was always try to do these things and I liked editing especially because you know there's a, a cheesy magic technique you can make yourself disappear if you just have the camera on a tripod press pause and then step out of the shot and press record again and it's so it's a silly little thing and I, and I like that you know um, but it's so easy to, to edit videos and in fact something I didn't talk about you don't need professional software you actually don't need any software so I was telling Moses what you can do is, and I think especially if you're a partner, I think it might be available for everybody. 
So you upload your video to YouTube, and there's a feature on YouTube that lets you edit the video um, the, and re-upload it. So you upload the video first privately, as your like 20 minute long video, and then within YouTube, on the internet, no software, you say, I want this bit, and then I want it to cut over to this bit, and then this bit. So all of that editing you can do on your computer.